Hello, this is Miss Richards, and today we're going to do a crash course review of the forms of energy. So you may remember that there are two states of energy, potential, which is stored, and kinetic, which is the energy of motion. So each of those states comes in different varieties or forms. The way we, we remember these six forms is the acronym Mr. Scent. So M is for mechanical, R is for radiant, C is for chemical, E is for electrical, N is for nuclear, and T is for thermal. So we're going to get into the definitions and examples for each of those. So mechanical energy comes from an object's motion or position. It's equal to the total potential and kinetic energy of an object. So this is a combination of the stored energy and the energy of motion. Sound is included as a type of mechanical energy. Sometimes it's listed separately or specified you know, mechanical and then in parentheses sound. Radiant energy is the vibration of electrically charged particles. It includes visible light, solar radiation or ultraviolet, radio waves, microwaves, and x-rays. Chemical energy is the energy locked in the bonds between atoms and it gets released during chemical reactions like photosynthesis. So chemical energy is stored in food, fuel, and batteries. Electrical energy is the energy of moving electrons, so specifically about electrons, no other part of the atom. Conductors are materials through which electrons can pass easily, so the wiring system in homes and with all of your devices, that's where the electrical energy flows. You know, it ends up you know, powering our screens or powering our light bulbs. So the electricity that we're familiar with in our homes is an example of electrical energy as well as static and lightning. Nuclear energy is the energy in the nucleus of atoms. It gets released through fission or fusion reactions. Thermal energy is the kinetic energy of particle movement. So entire atoms, you know, we're focusing on the entire atom and we're only looking at the kinetic energy of it, not the potential energy. So you can think of this as heat, you know, how much kinetic energy a material has. So when you look at a bicycle, which form of energy do you think of? Well, on a bicycle, you've got the pedals that rotate and the wheels that rotate. This is energy of motion, so we would label that as an example of mechanical energy. This, we have nucleus, it's splitting and completely split into two smaller atoms, so this is fission, so this would be nuclear energy. A battery. So while batteries generally power electrical devices, batteries by themselves are stored energy. So that gets classified as chemical. The sun. There's several ways to think about this. So the sun, we know, produces light and heat. So light is radiant energy. Heat is thermal energy but the sun itself is a giant fusion reaction, so it could also qualify as nuclear energy. A campfire, or any fire for that matter, produces two things, heat and light, so thermal and radiant energy. A wind turbine, so wind farms are meant to generate electrical energy, but the turbine itself, it has those three propellers. They rotate around when the wind blows, so that would be mechanical energy. A clothing iron. It's powered by electrical energy and it produces thermal energy. So you could focus on either of those. 
lightning is electrical energy, but when lightning strikes, we also have light and we also have heat. So radiant and thermal get added to the list. Music. Like we said before, sound is a form of mechanical energy. A match, a lit match, it's just smaller fire, so thermal and radiant again. Soup. Well, soup is food, so chemical, and you can see the little wisps of heat waves coming off of it, so thermal could be added to that list. A tree, or any plant for that matter, is using photosynthesis as long as the sun is shining, and photosynthesis is a chemical reaction. All right, so we have these six forms of energy, and they each fall under the umbrella of kinetic or potential energy. So we're going to go ahead and sort those. Thermal energy, the energy of particle motion is kinetic. Nuclear energy, stored in the nucleus of atoms, is potential energy. Electrical energy comes from moving electrons, so that is kinetic. Chemical energy, locked in the bonds between atoms, so that's a form of potential energy. Radiant energy is the vibrations of electromagnetic waves, so that falls under the kinetic category. And mechanical energy, you may remember, it's equal to potential energy plus kinetic energy. So that goes in the in-between. It is both potential and kinetic at the same time. So now we're going to get into energy transformations. The law of conservation of energy says that energy can't be created or destroyed, so it pretty much just gets recycled. It's transformed into a different form of energy. So a small example, if you put your hands together and move them back and forth, eventually you will get thermal energy because of the friction between your palms. So let's look at some other ones. Flash uh, flashlights. We have a three-step energy chain. So sometimes it's helpful to think of things out of order. So don't necessarily work from left to right. So what comes out? of a flashlight. Well, we have the light bulb producing light that is radiant energy. Okay, what powers a flashlight? Well, you have to put in batteries. Batteries are a form of chemical energy. So what connects the two? Well, there's wiring inside and that means electrical energy. So this is your completed energy transformation or energy chain for a flashlight. Riding a bicycle. So if we think about what is actually powering the bike, that would be the human. Well, what's powering the human? How do we get our energy? We eat food. So digestion is a chemical reaction. So that's really the power source. The biker pedals, which is mechanical. And then where the tires meet the road, there's friction, which will produce heat or thermal energy. A television. This one looks a little different. You have a blank spot over here, and it produces three things at the same time. So what powers a TV? Well, it has to be plugged in, so electrical energy. And what do you get out of it? Well, the screen lights up, so that's radiant. We hear sound, so mechanical. And after a while, heat, which is thermal energy. So lighting a match, we've already gone over the example that a match produces radiant and thermal energy. So what are the steps that come before that? Well, you have to actually strike the match against that sandpaper-like material, so that's mechanical energy. And the tip of the match, it starts out red, and after 
the fire is done and it's gone out, it's black. You may recall that a change in color is a clue to chemical change, a chemical reaction. So that's that middle piece connecting them. Using a cell phone. Cell phones run on a battery, not necessarily a Duracell battery, but still a battery, which is chemical energy. There's wiring inside, so electrical. And then the things that come out of it. Well, you hear noises, which is mechanical sound energy. The screen lights up, which is radiant. And after a while, if you're using your phone for a long time, you'll notice that it heats up, so thermal energy. A nuclear power plant. This is another one we're going to do a little bit out of order. So a nuclear power plant gets its energy from nuclear reactions. The goal of a power plant is to produce electrical energy. So the steps in between, so we have the reactor vessel where fission happens. It heats up and releases steam through these pipes. So the boiling water, thermal energy, the steam travels into this chamber where there's a turbine and it spins around. That's mechanical energy. And then eventually a generator is used to make it into electrical energy. For a microwave, you have to plug it in. So it starts with electrical energy and microwaves are on the electromagnetic spectrum, which means radiant energy and it heats up the food inside, so produces heat. A hair dryer, again, something else you have to plug in, so it starts with electrical energy. It produces heat, thermal energy. It blows your hair around, so that's mechanical, and also it makes a fair amount of noise. So you list mechanical sound as a separate product. Photosynthesis. So plants get their energy from the sun. Are they taking radiant energy from the sun or thermal energy from the sun? Well, thermal energy or just heat would mean that we could put a plant in a dark closet and just put a heater in there and it would grow, which is not the case. So Yes, plants get energy from the sun, but they're taking in radiant energy, not the thermal energy. And photosynthesis, as we've already discussed, is a chemical reaction. So this is a very simple energy chain for photosynthesis, but what if we took it back one more step? What powers the sun? The sun is a giant fusion reaction, so it is powered by nuclear energy. And lastly, we have fireworks. So we're going to focus on this picture for just a minute. The way that you get different colors in fireworks is by using different element compounds. So copper produces the blue colors, Strontium produces the red colors, sodium produces more yellow colors. So fireworks are just little packages of chemical compounds. So chemical is where we start this energy chain. Then you light the fuse, it takes off, and then there is an explosion producing heat. Pretty lights, which is radiant energy, and then you hear a pretty loud noise, so mechanical sound is where we end that energy chain. I hope this was helpful. Please reach out to your teacher if you have any further questions about the forms of energy.